you and uh, uh, Holland. We're really excited about uh, what's going on with uh, what uh, Layer's doing, and, and just like everyone else, really excited about the future of augmented reality. Um, and, and, uh, but I want to talk to you uh, about uh, what's going on today. Um, first and foremost, uh, what a real thrill it is to be considered a finalist with the Layer Creation Challenge. Um, there's lots of really amazing stuff that is going on, and um, we're just we're just happy to be a small part of it. Um, of course, uh, you know, I mean, everyone talks about that uh, augmented realities are this kind of new frontier, certainly this new media of what's going on. Um, and and part of the exciting part about that is that. Uh, the reality of it is we can leverage this technology, or, or we at Second Sight can leverage your technology to, to make some money, which is pretty exciting. And that's, uh, um, the, and if the analogy is, and I think it's a weak analogy, that, um, that the, the browsers that are out there are kind of the Netscape of the internet, um, then, then it's this whole world, of course, of content creation. And, and the reason I think that's a weak analogy, because I think that the, the mobile device is, is uh, is, is a huge step uh, in technology, way beyond uh, what uh, the computer is, because they're affordable, they're portable, and they have these suite of sensors. Um, and, and the exciting stuff about augmented reality is that, uh, of course, the early adopters are the artists, because it is an entire new media. Um, and with that in mind, we have partnered with uh, uh, people here in Chattanooga to um, augment over 180 works of art as uh, public sculptures in Chattanooga. Um, and this is just kind of our first foray into this. Uh, and so the notion is that uh, um, not only am I actually a lay person in technology, uh, but I'm a lay person when it comes to art as well. But just like everything else, if I had more information about it, I would maybe appreciate it more. If I, understood kind of what the sentiment was about why the artist was doing this particular work, I would understand it more. So these uh, 180 works of art that we're still kind of working out uh, uh, and putting out um, are, are going to be available. And initially, of course, they were geolocated, um, but we soon realized that that was a bit limiting. So we, we've, uh, we, you, we've developed these uh, 360 layers that will put pieces of art around you wherever you are. Um, and it's pretty exciting because uh, without having really any press, uh, this uh, art from Chattanooga has been seen in over 83 countries around the world. Uh, and I think more than anything else, that speaks to the, 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 the reach of Layer. Um, because obviously people were like, hey, let's look at Chattanooga art. It came up on the new Layer that they were checking out. So we got some pretty exciting statistics on that. And, and not only that, but uh, here not too... Far from now, we could say that somebody was in this particular town uh, in, in a different state and looked at art, and four or five months later, they came to Chattanooga and looked at it there. So you can start to add some metrics. Um, uh, how do I know if I've got millions of dollars worth of infrastructure in public art that it's meeting any of the social or economic needs of the city? Uh, but now, all of a sudden, you can because, because you're not taking any tickets. No one's, no one's, no one's really taking any attendance. So here's a chance for the owners of the infrastructure to have some kind of metrics behind it, this heads and beds kind of notion. Um, so uh, we're really excited about that. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to come over here. And I'm, yeah, I, 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 we're really excited about Chattanooga, obviously. That's the world's longest pedestrian bridge. The, <laughs> um, they had this big event last weekend called Wine Over Water where they had a, a bunch of wine tasting and everyone showed up sober and walked away drunk. It was great. Um, but I want to show you where kind of we're going with some of this uh, as far as the, the, the geolocational. Um, so here, I'm going to see if I can switch the camera views real quick so I can watch it. Um, is that still right side up? Yes. Hopefully so. Um, well, so what we have here, of course, is, is a, a map of this area, and then on top of it that you can see, not so terribly well, but you see this X right here that is, that is our location. Um, can you move it a little closer? That's terrible. But uh, there we go. So this, this X here is our physical location on, on, on that particular map. It takes... 
Yeah, the dy dynamic, uh, it dynamically updates your location based on the user's GPS, and it is placed on a georeferenced map. But it's a uh, georeferenced uh, augment. Right. And so, and so here's a here's a point of interest, of course, and that's uh, part of the trust for public land. Is, and so now we can kind of look on the horizon, and of course see where that point was as, as well. Um, and, and you know, of course, add to any kind of. I'm going to flip back into this, this camera, the other camera. Um, so where we think this is a valuable technology is is. Uh, Working on greenways and parks and things that are of a walkable scale. So you've, you've certainly been to areas where there's an information uh, um, uh, a kiosk in front of you that tells you where you are and kind of uh, information. So using layer visions, you can now interact with that existing signage. And so, of course, it opens the doors for museums and everything that doesn't have to change any of their existing signage. They can, of course, just augment it on top of it. Um, uh, but uh, that's certainly part of the, the, the future that we're, we are headed. Um, with, with using that GPS points, now you can start to put any kind of other dynamic GPS points. Uh, we're working with uh, the, the local bus uh, company here in town to, to use their map to, to live update where the buses are on a paper map. Uh, you can imagine pretty easily, if you, any town you go to have brochures that show um, uh, where uh, different uh, a, a map of the city or a map of that downtown area, um, those are certainly the directions that we're heading. Um, we're very interested in the geospatial, um, and all of this is geospatial. Even the marker based, of course, is um, not immediately understood to be geospatial. But when you think about it, uh, talks uh, that uh, it's an inter interaction with your location within where that marker is. It, it certainly plays into that world. Looking at my notes, um, I, and I think I think a lot of the existing content that's out there is neat stuff. Don't get me wrong, but it's essentially you take a phone book and you geocode it, and which which turns an address into a GPS point. And if it says pizza, you put a pizza icon. But that's starting with existing content and forcing it on the augmented reality platform. We're very interested in starting with that platform and working our way out. Um, and, and that's where I think the power of the geospatial mixed with augmented reality is, is going to produce some pretty interesting results. Uh, we are very interested in doing two things, uh, telling stories and solving problems. Um, and that's, uh, that's the direction we're headed. And it's, uh, it, it's made so much easier by the hard work of, uh, of Lair and, uh, and all of your partners as well. Um, once again, really thrilled to be included in the layer creation as we've been floating around. Um, but uh, it's a trip, so thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Hello, I'm uh, Felix, and um, uh, my presentation is actually split into uh, three parts. Um, because it's a kind of unusual project, first I have to give um, my motivation why I built it. And um, then I will talk about the technical challenges, hoping to get perhaps some feedback from you. And uh, finally, I will give an application of the Reality Builder. So uh, what you see on the screen is uh, the code of the Reality Builder. And uh, this is my desk uh, in Baden-Baden, uh, where I'm currently working. And I'm doing uh, programming day by day, which uh, in the end is a bit uh, dull. So uh, let's go to another place. Uh, this is the Costa Brava in um, Spain, and uh, I've actually been there, I've been in Barcelona like half a year ago, and uh, what I've been doing there again was just uh, programming, so um, I would like to build something else. Uh, actually, I would like to do something uh, with my hands and build something in the real world. So uh, let's have a look at the big picture now. This is Baden-Baden, uh, which in this presentation kind of represents the virtual world. And we have also Barcelona in Spain, which in this presentation kind of represents a real world. And I was thinking how to connect these two and uh, how to come from one to the other in a, well, maybe easy way. 
So uh, that's why I built uh, Reality Builder and I want to give a quick uh, demonstration now so I have to open my web browser. Okay, um, what you see here is um, uh, some, uh, a kind of video stream of the real world and we can place a virtual block in here. Uh, you just navigate it with uh, arrow keys and you rotate it into place. Place it here for example. And then I click on make real and now um, you will actually see a pre-recorded video clip because uh, of course this is not live. But it can be live and I have also demonstrated this live. So um, this is, um, well, some may not call this augmented reality but I call it augmented reality because we have the overlap of something in the real world and something virtual. And um, after placing the block, I for some experimentation, I, I made it possible so that someone can uh, personalize the blog and add a message here, which then goes into a Twitter stream. So in the future, maybe uh, one would be possible to connect the blog with a Facebook profile and then later click on the real blog and see the Facebook profile or something like that. So um, now let me uh, show what uh, the guy in, say, Barcelona sees when he is... Um, doing the construction because he also has an interface which I call the administration interface. And let me show you this interface now. Okay, this interface is a bit rudimentary yet. At first I didn't want to show it here but I think it uh, illustrates very well what are the technical challenges. Um, what we see is again the user interface and uh, then we see um, in the uh, right top corner we see settings, those are for camera and uh, then we see a list of the blocks that are built. And uh, the problem at the moment is there is no computer vision, so I have to enter all the camera, um, the camera position manually. I compute it and um, then I enter it, that's a bit of work. And uh, so of course it's not so stable, if the camera moves, um, then I have to re-enter the camera settings. And uh, another problem is, the, what I call challenge number two, is that um, all the blocks are assumed to sit perfectly on top of each other. Of course, as the construction is very big, this cannot um, be assumed anymore. And um, the third problem is, the, um, if, someone is if we are using this live, then uh, someone has to look at the list of all blocks. And in the list, um, if someone requests a block to be built, it will appear in the list. And uh, so you have to put a computer next to you and um, maybe walk over to the computer then uh, back to the construction site and build the block. So that's not so nice. But again, with a small construction, that's uh, feasible. So um, now I want to uh, show you a, a solution proposal to all these three challenges. And I will go back to the uh, demonstration. Okay, we see again the guy in Barcelona who is uh, doing the building. And um, to add some computer vision, I was thinking to add um, Fedor shields on top of the um, blocks. <laughs> and uh, this then allows to um, give him an easier interface for uh, building the blocks. <laughs> of course, uh, using such uh, uh, cyber goggles is a bit expensive, so uh, for a reward application, we may just use an iPhone. Okay, now. Um, Let's go back to Baden-Baden, um, which represents the virtual world. And um, let's see how the new interface would look, because the user interface would also change a bit. The new interface works like this. You uh, click on a spot where you want to build. And then you rotate the block into place. And finally, you again click uh, Make Real then you see all the blocks that are um, going to be built. Those are in a state uh, which I call pending. And finally they get built. Now the problem is um, there is another challenge. I do this all in my free time and um, it, this will, this, in developing this new user interface will take me, I don't know, maybe something like four weeks, maybe a bit longer. And um, during that time, I also have to um, 
repeat myself. So uh, if anyone has any suggestion how to get uh, funding for an AR project, that would be great. <laughs> so I don't want to... Um, now let's go to another place. Um, we have so far seen uh, Baden-Baden and uh, Barcelona. Now let's go to Berlin. Um, I like organizing events and why don't we use this in Berlin to build something? And uh, yeah, that's the idea, to build in Berlin. And we don't want to build just anywhere. We want to build in the heart of Berlin. And of course to get permissions to build in the heart of Berlin it's not so easy, you need to have a good team, but I think that's what we have. Um, my friend, uh, he is uh, the project manager, and we have a team of maybe uh, 10 people now. Um, among the in the team there are um, two architects, and they designed uh, blocks out of a transparent material, which would look really nice, especially when illuminated at night. And um, we have uh, good connections also to um, decision makers and um, those are politicians. And so um, the idea is of course to build in the heart of Berlin, but uh, it's not who, we who decide um, what gets built. The idea of course is uh, that the whole world uh, decides what gets built. Everyone can uh, participate. So now I'm at the end of my presentation. And I just um, want to say uh, one more thing. And this is that uh, the Reality Builder is a totally open project. It's all open source, so I'm happy to show everything I know about it. And um, I would also like to get some feedback. That would be great. OK, thank you. Thank you. Um, it's actually the third time uh, I got the opportunity to speak at Layer Art, so thanks once again. <laughs> um, uh, I have, I've been working on some uh, AR projects. I'm not myself, not a developer. Uh, I think of the, the concepts and, and have some really nice friends who actually do the developing. So I won't take credit for the actual developing, but let me show you my, uh, yeah, my pet project. Um, it's called Personnel, uh, it's like personal in French, um, and let me just uh, show you uh, what it is. Um, actually, about a year and a half, almost two years ago, I was thinking of this idea. Uh, I'm, I really am an art enthusiast, um, and I was thinking, how can you bring art to the virtual world? Um, of course, there's online art uh, works, uh, there's a lot of digital art, um, but I, actually the, the, the stamp triggered me. Um, when you send a message or an, a letter, you put on the stamp, the, the stamp itself is almost like a small artwork that accompanies the message in the letter. So I thought, is it possible to make like a virtual stamp? Um, so I started out uh, with that idea and uh, I had the service built that allows you to add this mini artwork, as I call it, to your link. It, it's actually a link shortener, uh, so you can add these artworks to your messages. Um, then Layer came along, and I thought, wouldn't be, it be great to have these, these stamps or these small artworks uh, to accompany you uh, virtually? Uh, so I transformed the service into uh, a layer, uh, which allows you to uh, attach a mini artwork to your physical location as long as you have the, uh, the layer open. Uh, that worked really nice. Um, and then layer thought, okay, let's build the layer player. And I thought, wait a minute, if I have the layer player, I can add this layer to an iPhone app and actually can work out a way to uh, make it this in, into a a business-like service where you actually can ask money for uh, the service you provide because the iPhone allows you to have in-app purchases. So here comes the personal iPhone app combining um, the service, the layer player and in-app purchases. Um, actually, what I would 
like to happen in the future is best visualized by this clip um, by the Toxic Avenger. It's just the, the intro, and actually, what this guy does is uh, selects his virtual avatar. And basically, what my service allows you to do is um, create your own virtual avatar. And um, you can say, maybe you know uh, Threadless, it's a t-shirt company, uh, they have all these wonderful designs and you select one, they print it on a shirt for you and you have an artwork to carry around. Basically what personnel does, does the same thing, only you don't get a, sh a shirt, uh, which makes it a little bit cheaper, but you use virtual reality to show off uh, the, the art that you like. Um, like I said, I was inspired by the stamp. Um, what you do is just select the artwork you like. Um, you can add it to a link in the initial version. Um, and then uh, people can see that uh, artwork. But if you go, um, actually if you follow that link, people first see the artwork and then go to the actual the, the, the URL that you send out. Um, but if you take it to augmented reality, like I said, you can make it a virtual object that accompanies you and you can decorate yourself like you would wear jewelry, put on a nice shirt with a nice print um, and actually uh, carry it along with you. So uh, I had this made uh, last year um, because the actual layer wasn't uh, ready uh, back then. But it visualizes what actually uh, you can do already in the layer right now. Uh, and you can do uh, basically the same thing uh, with the iPhone app. Um, the, the person that is using the, the, the service has an artwork selected. And if somebody else opens up the regular layer or the app, they can look at that person and see the artwork pop up uh, over their location, uh, basically. Uh, and the other person can do the same thing, so everybody can start wearing virtual um, decoration. Um, just to switch over to uh, the making of the app, uh, like I said, I'm not a developer, I just uh, think of these ideas. And um, my developing skills go as far as uh, balsamic mockups, um, so I just draw what I'd like to happen uh, and put on sticky notes uh, and then I send it over to my developers uh, and put in all kinds of samples, okay this part I want to be working like in that app and this part like in that app and here you plug in layer and uh, all these kinds of things and fortunately they understand what I mean because um, in about uh, two months later the, the app was ready so if you uh, launch the app, this is your first screen, and it's like an art gallery. You can swipe through the artworks that are in there. Uh, some are paid, like I said. Um, it's through in-app purchases, and you have to buy this particular artwork to actually be able to, to use it, either in the short uh, URL shortener or as uh, virtual art. Uh, uh, others are free. And basically what you do is you say, okay, now I want to decorate a link. Um, and you can uh, create uh, a shortened URL, um, like Pitly or all of those around. Um, the other option is to decorate your virtual self. And you have two options uh, in the sense that you can go directly to the AR view, which is the layer player. Uh, and this is, for example, what you would see if, uh, if you're the only, the only one around. Uh, um, you see your own artwork, and it's always positioned north of you, so you can see what you're wearing, so to say. Uh, if somebody else pops up the, the, the layer or the app, you can see uh, other artworks uh, show up at their location. Um, the final option is to share uh, on Foursquare, because uh, if you're the only, one, only person in the bar using this app, it's not much fun, but you can say, okay, I'm right here. Um, you can go to the Foursquare, say, okay, you log into Foursquare, say, I'm right here, and I'm wearing uh, this particular artwork. Uh, and actually what happens is that um, in Foursquare, uh, you get the message, this is where I am, and you can edit the text.
but also the, the, the artwork you chose is uploaded as a photo to your uh, Foursquare check-in. Uh, this actually wasn't planned, it's just uh, Foursquare in the meantime added this feature, which was very nice for me. Um, like I said, the, the app is live, you can get it uh, through this link. Um, and yeah, I, I really like you to, to, to try it out and uh, let me know what, what you think. Um, to go into the future view where, uh, where I want to head, um, uh, thanks to Layer, the, the, the options uh, that are available are uh, uh, increasing all the time. For example, uh, first of, uh, at first I only had 2D images in there because I started out with this stamp idea. But uh, then uh, Layer uh, allowed 3D models as well. So uh, right now there's one 3D model in there, uh, which is particularly fun if you use the, the, the virtual decoration option, because now is this, this block-like model is uh, projected around your um, physical uh, location. So basically you're, you're walking in this, this block uh, design. Uh, but you could imagine that you can design all kinds of avatar-like uh, yeah, uh, structures which you can wear virtually. So uh, I'm really excited to, to see what artists can think of to, uh, uh, to have as options to, to select uh, within this uh, application. Uh, also, I'm thinking of how to uh, implement a new uh, layer vision, if there's uh, ways to combine these, these features. Um, and like I said, I'm always looking for uh, new artists that can add work to, uh, to this service. So, uh, to wrap it up, uh, please keep in touch through uh, Twitter or the Facebook page and uh, let me know what you think. Thank you very much.